If you spent any amount of time making beats on a desktop computer or a laptop, you've definitely used VST plugins at some point. On the iPad, there are not VSTs, but there are plugins with some dope sounds. In this video, I'm going to dive into the difference between audio unit plugins and inner app audio and how to use those in Beatmaker 3. <music> Welcome back creatives. I'm Ja Rell, your music technologist, here to help you master the tech you need to make music freely. I make weekly tip and tutorial videos as well as product reviews on all things music production. If you enjoy that kind of content, you know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. The first time I started using plugins, it changed the game for me in my music production. Plugins give you the ability to play in your own melodies, chords, and basses, but with actually good sounds. So when I first started finding some good sounds, I'm like, man, I can finally get that high quality sound I'm looking for without having to use loops. While there definitely isn't as much variety for sound plugins on the iPad, I definitely still prefer it to the VST experience on like a desktop or a laptop for one main reason, price. Most VSTs worth having cost at least a hundred bucks. Um, in the iPad world, in the app store, you can get sounds for free, five bucks, seven bucks, and usually capping out around 40. And I've said this before and I'll say it again, iPads kind of take the cake when it comes to sounds that sound good and are priced well. So when you're getting your sounds from the app store, you really have two main options. You've got IAAs and AUV3s. Now that's inner app audio and audio unit version three plugins. Um, and some support both. Now I highly recommend getting as many plugins as you can in the AUV3 format. And I'll tell you why. These audio unit plugins allow you to open up as many instances of the plugin as you want in one session in your DAW. Playing in MIDI is easy and playback works without any extra fuss. Also, AUV3s tend to play better with your DAWs with less bugs and glitches and things like that. Now, inner app audio can be great, but there's a couple things to consider. Essentially what iOS is doing is taking MIDI and audio information from a separate app that is open in the background and routing that information to your DAW. Now the downside to that is that you can only have one instance of an IAA open at a time, but there are some ways around that. So let's jump in and take a look at the difference in a Beatmaker 3 session. Y'all know that's my DAW of choice, so let's get right to it. All right, let's go ahead and open Beatmaker 3. So what we're gonna do is click the hamburger menu, click plugins, audio unit V3, that's what we want. And I'll load up Tines by Clevgrand, one of my favorites for kind of that road Z sound. That's, that's one of my favorites. Um, I'll click the 64 pad just so we have access to more. Um, there it is. So that's one instance of Tines open. Now I can open another. I'm just going to click my tab here. And boom, there's Tines, load plug-in. Now both of these are set to Tines. So... Um, and each one of those has a separate channel in the playlist tab right here. Now this has full MIDI support, so I'm gonna go ahead and connect my CME X key air. And there we go. So I'll just play in something basic just so we can see how it works. All right, so we've got that part in. I can click my other Tines plugin and I can play something over it. Whatever, it's nothing fancy, but you get the picture. I, I've got two different plugins going and they're both Tines. Now, I'll show you another plugin I like to use. And here's another way you can add a plugin. Click Create New Bank. Okay, go into the sample tab, click plug in, audio unit, and we're gonna load Basilicious 2, one of my go-to plugins. And there it is. 
Now, pro tip, I use Basilicious 2 actually a lot for my basses, of course, but I also use it a lot for my uh, synth solos. So you can pitch these up the octaves and get some really dope synth solo sounds. So check that out. Um, but anyway, here is Basilicious. So let me exit out of here and I'll show you how you go back to this plugin tab. So if you're in the, in the playlist tab, for example, you can always go back to the sample tab and you're in the plugin tab here, click Basilicious, and this is what it looks like. Um, same thing goes for Tines. If I want to go back to the playlist, click Tines, go back to the sample tab, and click the icon, that's what Tines looks like. Another plugin that I use a lot is Mellow Sound. Um, you might think the sounds are a little bit cheesy, but they just have that perfect vibe for lo-fi, so I'll show you. I'm going to go to my Banks tab, create another bank, and then here's Mellow Sound, load plugin, and we'll go back to the sample tab, open up Mellow Sound, boom, they're flute. Um, and there's a lot of different sounds in here. I have the free version. Matter of fact, let me tell you about all of these plugins, about how much they cost. So, um, Mellow Sound I originally got for free, um, but I unlocked the extra sounds for $4.99. And then Tines by Clevgrand, I'm, I believe it was about seven bucks. Um, and then Basilicious was about the same. So see, not expensive, pretty cheap. So next we'll check out how inner app audio plugins work. Let's go in, uh, in a fresh session, we're gonna go up here, click the hamburger menu, click plugins, inner app audio, and one that I highly recommend is Module. Module has a solid set of sounds. Now it is a little more on the pricey side. This one cost me 40 bucks for the pro version, but they also have a free version which comes with a, a smaller set of sounds. Um, so we'll load up module onto this bank. So the next thing we need to do is go in and adjust the MIDI settings so that it'll function properly. I'm going to click this MIDI keyboard tab, go to MIDI setup, port should be module, and then we'll leave the channel on none, and, or with my MIDI controller. And the way we would access the plugin, the actual interface to change the sounds would be to just click this icon right here. And that takes me into Module Pro. And there's a whole list of sounds. I have the Dark Grand Piano selected now. Um, we'll exit out of that and we'll go back to Beatmaker 3. Now, let's try recording something. Go back here. Super basic, but it works really well. We've got MIDI in there, and if I play it back, you'll hear. So as you can see, it plays in just fine. We've got full MIDI data, we've got the audio playing in playback, but here's the catch. I can only have one instance of that plugin loaded at a time. I can show you, if I try to add another bank, and then I try to go into my plugins. There it is, it says module already loaded. So there are some workarounds with this. Say I got my MIDI perfect and I'm good with it. I'm good if it's just an audio file. I can actually record this to an audio file. So what I'll do is create an audio track and then I'll record arm it, press and hold, audio input, select internal, and here's my module channel, select pad, module, and I can actually record this MIDI to an audio track. So press record. And there it is, there's the audio track. I'll mute this one so you can see. It is in fact playing the audio track. Cool, so now what I can do is that frees me up to use this same module channel to record something else over the top. So I can delete this if I want to, and say I want to actually just record some module again. Let 
Anyway, there we go, we've got two tracks. Now there is a whole way to just go straight past this MIDI data. Say you don't care about the MIDI, you just wanna be able to record your tracks. You can use the same channel over and over again to use different sounds. Um, and you can record it straight to an audio track. Here's how that works. So I'll actually create another audio track. Record arm it, and I'll select it. We'll set it up the same way we did last time. Internal, module, boom. Now I can actually skip recording module. I'll just turn off the record arm, and we can record straight to audio track. Here's how it goes. And there it is, another audio track. Now say I wanted to add a separate instrument. I can go into module in the, in the banks, the sample tab and click plug in, open up module. Boom, there it is. Say I want, I don't know, e-piano. We'll do soft time. Okay. Go back, exit out. All right, and I, now I wanna record another audio track with a whole other instrument. Turn off that record arm, turn on that record arm, and we'll select audio input, internal, module, boom. Now we're using the same plugin and we're gonna record a whole different instrument. Anyway, the track isn't all that great, but I got the sound I'm looking for. I got my other sound from the same plugin and I'm, I'm building my tracks. Now this is a workaround. It's not ideal, it's not the same as an AUV3 and that's why I say go for the AUV3 if it supports it. Module doesn't support it. Korg, if you're listening, make module support AUV3, please. Now if after all this, plugins on the iPad is just not your jam and you want quick access to sounds easily, you can always check out the Beatmaker Sound Store. Up here in the top, there's a lot of sounds in here that are super cheap. This is another way to get access to good sounds without breaking the bank. There's full packs in here for as low as free to 99 cents, 2.99 and beyond, up to about 10 bucks. And a lot of them are really good. That has been it, you guys. If you're interested in, in getting any of the plugins that I used, uh, in this video for yourself. I'll leave a link in the description to all of these sounds in the App Store and you can go pick them up yourself. If you're into the nitty gritty of iPad music production and you wanna know how to make your tracks sound more professional, check out my video up here and I'll link it in the description as well. It's my video on how to sidechain in Beatmaker 3. As always, my creatives, go out there and make something dope and I will see you in the next video. Yeah.